Yeah, welcome also. I Barbara Gerten. I'm working since 2008 for Merck in Darmstadt in Germany and I'm head of the German delegation for ISO and CEN in food microbiology, but I'm also active in water microbiology. So today I would like to give you a very short general introduction to EN ISO standards in food and water microbiology. And I'm very pleased that we have also some experts here which are active in SEN and ISO working groups. Very nice. Hopefully I can encourage more of you to be active in ISO. Recently and revised amended EN ISO standards will be the main topics and then I will give you a pr short preview on the next upcoming major revisions. Is the loudness now okay for the background? Yes. Thank you. So, coming now to a general introduction. We have in food microbiology, the subcommittee 9, microbiology of ISO technical committee food products, and in sense the same uh, structure. These are covering the development of methods in the field of microbiological analysis of the food chain from the primary production stage to food and feed products, including the food production and handling. So the whole chain of food microbiology. It includes general standards, so-called horizontal standards always, for method validation, for example, for sample preparation, and currently we have nearly 100 published standards and 15 active projects. It is very important that most standards in the food microbiology are European and ISO standards. That means as these are European standards, they have to be implemented in all European countries, including Italy, for example. We have a very nice ISO website and it is uh, given a link also. <coughs> and uh, on this website you can find new publications, but also a lot of additional documents, official ISO documents. For example, Excel sheets for the verification uh, in your lab of validated methods, how uh, to do the calculation and these Excel sheets are ISO validated, so you have not to validate this Excel sheet by yourself. This is very important for the lab. You can download these and these are validated by ISO, so these are accepted. As a lot of your labs, you in your labs, uh, your labs are accredited on EN ISO methods for food microbiology, it is very important that we have validation data for these methods. Unfortunately, not all ISO EN ISO methods for food microbiology are validated by the moment. We have only around 25 methods which are validated. ISO started a very big program to validate the rest of the analytical methods until end of 2027. Yes, very big program, very, very, very big, because the reason is from 1st January 2028, it is mandatory to validate a new method for the laboratory if you have no validation data from the reference method to validate it as a single lab validation according part 4 of ISO 16140. And this is very, very big work very big work. Until 1st January 2028, you can use the verification part of 16140, a specific annex, which is much, much easier. If you want to know which methods are already validated for which matrix, you can use this tables on the ISO website. Unfortunately, I cannot enlarge, uh, but I will not go in detail. So there are tables which are listing for which ISO methods we have validation data for which food categories or feed and for which sample size, which is also important. 
So look to the ISO website, you find a lot of details. In water microbiology, we have not so much um, methods. We have currently 29 um, uh, published um, uh, methods, uh, EN, mostly EN ISO methods for the uh, water microbiology and six projects under development. Here uh, you can go also on the specific dedicated website and there you can see for all methods uh, some details and you can decide if this method is uh, applicable for you or not. And most um, water standards uh, are uh, already validated or will be validated also for the future. All new standards in water microbiology have full validation data that you can verify this in your laboratory under accreditation. Coming now to recently uh, revised or amended standards. A very big topic <coughs> recently published is the new EN ISO 15213 series for Clostridia and Clostridium perfringens. We recently had a publication of the part one of this new series, Microbiology of the Food Chain, Horizontal Method for the Detection and Enumeration of Clostridium Species. This replaces the former ISO 15213 from 2003, which has not been an EN ISO standard, it was only an ISO standard. But the new revised standard is an European ISO standard, so it will be implemented in all European countries, step by step, of course. What about uh, the topics in this uh, new part one? Here you have the... Uh, uh, ah, it's, now it's working. You can see my small little red dot. Yeah, ah, great, great. So, the former uh, um, standard from 2003 had the scope sulfate reducing bacteria. New scope is sulfate reducing Clostridium species. But still, it is possible to uh, uh, report sulfate reducing bacteria. But it was a uh, um, request to implement a confirmation um, step for the Clostridia. And uh, it was also a request from the user's lab to specify better the heat treatment. This heat treatment is optional and is now clearly defined and described. The culture media has also changed a little bit. It is the iron sulfate agar, but with a reduced sulfate. So it is slightly modified. And it is very important to use this reduced sulfate concentration because it was shown in the working group by experiments, a lot of experiments, that with the high sulfate, some clostridia, like sporogenes, will not grow very well and show not good blackening. That was the reason why in this new part one, sulfate is reduced. It's very important to use the iron sulfate agar with this reduced sulfate. Still, it is used by poor plate technique. Of course, um, uh, no tubes are described in the new standard because the evaluation of the tubes was not easy. But we also described in the new standard the use of large petri dishes, 140 millimeters, which can be used with 10 milliliter sample or dilution. So you have a lower limit of detection, which was also a request of user labs. So incubation is now clearly defined with 48 hours. Of course, anaerobically, no specific options, clearly defined, clear direction. And then, of course, we need a confirmation because we have uh, um, the application to Clostridium species. Confirmation is very easy here for part one. You streak the grown colonies from the iron sulfate agar on a blood agar or an other non-selective agar. Could be also Columbia agar base without blood if blood is not available. And then you incubate both plates, one anaerobically, one anaerobi aerobically, and of course only anaerobic grown cultures are Clostridium species. 
Of course, if you have aerobic growth, it's not a clostridium. So it's a relatively simple confirmation. Always now in the ISO standards is written that alternative procedures can be used, but they have to be validated according ISO 16140 series. Yeah, but this is mentioned now. Of course, but it is mentioned. And which is very important, we have now also performance testing of the quality assurance of the culture medium included in the table in the standard and the performance characteristics in an informative annex from ring trials. I will come now to the details. Both were not included in the previous revision, in the previous edition. So these tables, I will not go in detail, are now in the standard itself. And of course, uh, these are mandatory to be followed and will supersede the information which was given in the 11133, our famous culture media standard. And it will be deleted from the tables from the next revision of 11133. So this part one uh, was uh, fully validated in ring tiles from the working group with more than five uh, categories and also other categories, pet food and animal feed additional and environmental samples for food and feed production. And we have also a special protocol for the innovation from feed. So this method has been validated for more than five, uh, at least five food categories. It is applicable and validated for a broad range of food. Very good, was not before. So the main technical changes are, have a major impact on the performance characteristics of the method. I showed you uh, main technical changes was, for example, the changed agar, the, say, uh, the new confirmation and so on. That means if a lab has already been uh, accredited for the former method, ISO 15213, the lab has to re-verify the new part one method according to part three of ISO 16140. Yeah, that's, that's life, we have to say. <laughs> yes, it's a new method, revised method, and it's uh, clearly described that it has to be verified. Coming now to part two. Part two of this new series replaces now ENISO 7937 from 2004 and we know a lot of laboratories uh, are accredited to this method. It is a method for enumeration of Clostridium perfringens by colony count technique and has been published recently by November last year. It will be implemented now in the different countries. For example, the German version uh, will be published by next month, for example. So what are the differences? First, the scope has no difference. We still have a horizontal application for enumeration of clostridium perfringens. We have an optional heat treatment, which was not included in the former version. Good thing is the culture medium has not changed. We only have adapted the name, harmonized the name with the name given in the water standard. We have, uh, most of you uh, uh, using uh, water standards will know, we have a uh, water standard for Clostridium perfringens, which is using also TSC agar, which is the same TSC agar like here in the food microbiology. Absolute same name, same composition now. That's a good thing. So poor plate technique is used and also here like in part one, we can use the 140 millimeter petri dishes for the bigger sample size for 10 milliliters. And incubation is also the same like before. And then you count uh, the black colonies like here in the photo <coughs> uh, on the or in the TSC agar. And now we have a change. We have a change in the confirmation method. 
confirmation method of the former um, uh, uh, 7937 uh, 7, 7 from 2004 uh, was uh, the uh, LS medium or the nitrate motility medium and lactose gelatin medium. And we know from users that often there were big problems with these confirmations. So we really looked to new confirmations. And first idea was to use the same confirmation like in the water, the acid phosphatase test. But the problem with the acid phosphatase test is that it has a toxic component. So, and we want to avoid toxic components in ISO. So we really had a deep check and last but not least, uh, we <coughs> found the sulfide indole motility sim agar, which was used also for Clostridia in the 15th, in the 60s. And then we made um, some preliminary tests and included it also in the validation. Alternative procedures can also be used. So the acid phosphatase test is um, a very simple test like in the water microbiology. You spread colonies on the filter and add two or three drops of the acid phosphatase reagent and then a purple uh, co color developing uh, in um, three or four minutes is considered as a positive reaction for Clostridium perfringens. Very simple test but with a toxic component. It's not nice. So <coughs> we are very happy that besides the acid phosphatase test, we have now the description of the sulfide indole motility sim agar. Sim agar is very simple, uh, uh, prepared in tubes with a high depth, and then you step your colony direct in uh, the tube. Very simple and incubated overnight. With very important with loose caps in anaerobic conditions. So the tubes confirmed as positive Clostridium perfringens are have a blackening, they are sulfide production positive. They have no motility, so we have no growth outside the inoculation step. And we have a positive, a negative indole uh, reaction after adding the Kovac reagent. So it's a very simple test and we are very happy that it's now included in the ISO method but because it can be done everywhere without toxic component and all over the world Simbaga is available from different suppliers. So <coughs> we have the performance testing of the, um, for the culture media also uh, included as a table format like before. And we have also the performance characteristics included for a broad range of food matrix from the validation studies. Means here the tables for all the culture media and reagents. And for TSC agar, they are here we are using the same strains like in the water microbiology. And we have fully validated this new part two. Former edition was not fully validated for a broad range. So we have at least five categories of food matrices and additional categories for pet food and animal feed and environmental samples uh, from food or feed production. We have also a new informative annex how di to differentiate between pathogenic and non-pathogenic Clostridium perfringens by molecular differentiation. But it's for information, not mandatory to be used. So <coughs> this uh, method has now been validated for at least five food categories and additional categories. <coughs> but we have to say these changes had shown a major impact on the performance characteristics. And there, we have to say, if a lab has been um, uh, accre is already accredited for ENISO 7937 from 2004 and want to implement the new part two of the series, the method needs to be verified according part three. Yeah. Yeah. What about the detection of Clostridium perfringens? This is, was also a request uh, uh, often asked for specific raw materials, for example. So we tried also in ISO to develop a new part three, which will be published by mid of the year as a new technical specification for detection of Clostridium perfringens. 
The main steps are the sample preparation as usual. Then we will have a selective enrichment in a rapid perfringence medium, RPM, in closed tubes or bottles and incubated for 18 plus minus 4 hours at 46 degrees in a water bath, if possible. And then followed by isolation on TSC agar, same TSC agar as in part two, and on a new medium like a Lena plate, a Lena agar. Lena agar is an agar uh, which shows the acid fermentation of lactose and lecithinase reaction by Ekjolk. So both are incubated anaerobically and then co uh, the grown colonies are confirmed like in part two with acid phosphatase or sim agar. <coughs> so, the uh, new uh, at a glance, this new Clostridia series is the part one, which will replace uh, the former ISO one uh, or has replaced former version of uh, 2003. Main technical changes are uh, significant and have a major impact on the performance characteristics. Need a verification, same like for part two. And part three, we have to say it is a newly published technical specification. Why it is a technical specification? Because uh, the validation in the ring trials were performed during the COVID crisis in 2021 and a lot of labs were not able to participate fully. So we have only uh, partly uh, um, get got back the results from the validation study, uh, but it was possible to calculate performance characteristics and these can be used as indicative values for the per method performance when implement this in the laboratory. It is planned to do the full um, validation during next years for the part three. Yeah, this is a new series for Clostridia. We have also a webinar, given a webinar on this topic um, recently, um, last year. So uh, uh, when you need, um, we can change also the link to the webinar to this in Merck. Yeah, all uh, three parts is very important, have been validated uh, and in, in laboratory studies organized from 2019-2022 by Friesland Campina, the Netherlands, uh, us in uh, Merck in Darmstadt and uh, the Bavarian Health and Food Safety Authority in uh, Germany, south of Germany. What are other news in ISO world for food microbiology? We have uh, a new amendment for Campylobacter. For Campylobacter enrichment, which is part one of the ENISO 10272 series, we have now the use of the growth supplement in Preston broth for a better enrichment recommended, especially for Campylobacter coli. Uh, those of you who are doing uh, not a few labs, I know uh, Campylobacter from water. This growth supplement is also described in the ISO standard for Campylobacter from the water microbiology. And we have tested this in ISO and found very good results. So it is strongly recommended to use this growth supplement for Preston broth, also for the food microbiology. And uh, we have also uh, additional data deposit on the ISO website, um, which is a link given in the ISO standard. We have now uh, included in this amendment um, methods for molecular confirmation and identification and some corrections in the performance testing of the culture media. These um, new amendments for part one and part two for Campylobacter standards have been published by January last year. Then we had amendments to the EN ISO for Escherichia coli 0157, uh, which was published also in January 2020, uh, last year, and also for the Vibrio standard. Main content of both amendments are updated performance testing of the culture media and reagents. There were some mistakes, some missing uh, information, so amendments are nearly only on the performance testing of culture media and reagents.
We have to say that ENISO uh, 16654 is from 2001 and will be replaced um, in future, means 2025, maybe 26, by the new STEC standard uh, ENISO 13316, uh, three, for STEC. But this is for the future, not fu near future, middle future. Then we have also uh, two amendments uh, for the coagulase positive staphylococci standard, Staphylococcus aureus, for the part one method using Bert Parker agar and part two method using rabbit plasma fibrinogen agar. These uh, new amendments were corrections. Both were published in September last year. Corrections for the performance testing of the rabbit plasma and RPFA medium mainly and also it was written in the test report of the standard that it is mandatory to give the measurement uncertainty. But um, especially in Germany, for example, we had a lot of discussions. Not all test report uh, uh, requires uh, require a measurement uncertainty. So now it is corrected only when necessary or um, requested and it's not mandatory. And this will be also in the uh, all new standards for the future. We have also an amendment for the performance testing of culture media and reagents corrections for ISO 7251, horizontal method for the detection and enumeration of presumptive Escherichia coli by MPN methods for the food microbiology. It's not an EN standard, but it is often used when you have a low limit of detection, I know. And here we had also a correction mainly for the culture media quality control. Yeah, coming now to water testing, the new EN ISO 7704, which was published in um, uh, last year, January, the requirements for the performance testing of membrane filters used for direct enumeration of microorganisms by culture methods. This cancels and replaces the former ISO, which was not EN, it was only ISO 7704, which was a very old standard from 1985. Yeah, and I had the honor to be uh, the project leader for this project. We really need a long time together with my co-project leader from governmental uh, lab Aurich in northern Germany, Katrin, Dr. Katrin Ludin. This standard uh, re, um, specifies the requirements for the performance testing of membrane filters only for those membrane filters which are used for the retention and then placed on solid media, not for membrane filters used in enrichment for Campylobacter, for example, because that was too complicated. We first focused only on the membrane filters used with solid media. So. It applies to the manufacturers of membrane filters, but also to the labs using these membrane filters for their own testing or providing these uh, to other end users. It is mainly used in the water analysis, this 7704, but it is also cited for the analysis of juices, flavored waters and other samples when you have the combination of membrane filters with solid media. For example, in the methods for International Food Union, IFU methods, for alicyclobacillus, also uh, for colonies, uh, colony counting, um, mm. we have uh, the ISO 7704 cited to that the membrane filters have to be tested according to the standard. Because especially for alicyclobacillus, for example, we have seen that some combinations are not very good of filters together with the medium. Yeah, and especially this has been shown um, that we have some combinations not working very well of batches of membrane filters with batches of culture media. That was the reason that ISO 7704 now describes 
uh, performance testing which shows that the combination is fit for purpose. It's very important. It's a new way really to test the combination in a so-called microbiological function test. That means that the quality of the membrane filters shall always be tested together with the intended specific culture medium, which is mostly selective in water microbiology, like the Comogenic Coli agar, like Sodomonas citrimid agar, like Legionella media, and so on. It is very important to show that the uh, whole system is suitable for the test. Because we had data in ISO uh, that some combinations uh, were not detecting any Legionella. Where Legionella were in the sample, definitely. And others, we were not able to find the scientific reason for this. We had some assumptions, but at the end, ISO cannot do this R&D work to find out why it is. But ISO uh, has really uh, to do the work to describe a good analysis to show that uh, this combination is uh, fit for purpose. So that was the reason that Ian ISO 7704 now describes the batch testing of the uh, membrane filters always in combination with a specific selective culture medium. It describes uh, optional supplementary tests when this is not working. I will not go in detail, but all these tests are additional optional tests. It is very important to have this in mind really that the results from one species or group of microorganisms, Legionella, for example, may not valid for other groups like Pseudomonas. So it may be that one batch of filters is working very well with your batch of Legionella medium, but not with your batch of uh, the E. coli medium or Pseudomonas medium or Enterococcus medium. So, this uh, so-called batch testing is required when a different batch or a lot of membrane tests, a filter is tested. That is clear. There is a need for each batch of membrane filter to test with each batch of culture medium. Only for the quantitative analysis with a solid medium, for the enumeration. And this should be done before the usage, of course, or at least in parallel. So it has to be done in the same uh, methodology, like with the applicable uh, standard for Legionella, for E. coli, for Pseudomonas, for example. So incubation is always the same, like given in the specific standard. And it is uh, also possible to buy combinations pre-tested, but it is the responsibility of the end user to ensure then on the documentation and so on is uh, um, <coughs> done with the required uh, test strains, microbiological culture media and membrane filters. And what is a little bit Positive, we have to say, we know it is big testing, additional testing, but it is not required to evaluate the performance of the membrane filter separately to the performance of the culture medium. Means if you have a new batch of culture medium and a new batch of uh, filter, you can test both together. If both together are working well, according specifications, you can release both together. Yeah. At least, at least, I know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a minimum, yes, <laughs> yeah. So you have not to test um, filter or culture medium before. So we have here <coughs> also a lot of uh, examples in the ISO 7704 and also uh, um, really on dedicated example of the, on the coli standard, E. coli standard, coliform standard, uh, you know, um, I cannot make it bigger, no, sorry for this. So, you know, for the productivity of E. coli coliform agar, chromogenic, we have to test one E. coli and one coliform. 
That means for the combination of membrane filter with culture medium, you have to use the same specification. You have to use one control strain of E. coli and one control strain of the coliforms for the quantitative productivity. For the qualitative selectivity, one control strain of Enterococcus fecalis, and for the qualitative specificity, the control strain of Pseudomonas aeruginosa, which is given in the standard. And this has to be done for every combination of new batches. Yeah. And but uh, if you have tested both together, you can release culture medium and membrane uh, uh, in parallel, both together. We know that it is complicated, that it is a lot of additional work, maybe for the laboratories. We give also a practical example based on the E. coli coliform standard, how to test, how to prepare the inoculum for the mandatory test and also uh, for optional tests. So really in detail uh, how uh, to do it and uh, what uh, in case of any problems. So it's really a detailed um, description also on uh, possible uh, difficulties on uh, if a specification is not fulfilled, uh, productivity too low, too high, and so on. With this, I would like to give you a preview of the next upcoming major ENI SU revisions, uh, mainly what is coming next year not 2025, not 2026. I hope that Italy will invite me again in 2025 and give you then an update for 26. <laughs> Thank you all. No, no, no. So what is upcoming now? And now I will come back to the morning because we have under preparation a new amendment for validation of larger test portions size for qualitative methods direct connecting to your presentation from the morning. So it will be a new published amendment, uh, which is expected by mid of this year, soon, not so far. So currently the validation protocol for pooling samples is described in um, EN ISO 6887 part one of this year. I think you had it also in your uh, presentation as an informative annex. That means if you have uh, to uh, verify um, bigger portions by pooling, bigger, bigger sizes, you can use the uh, described uh, protocol from Annex uh, in the current part one of ISO 6887, but you are not mandatory. If you want to change it, you can do it because it's only a guideline. This will change. We will have in future from mid of this year, a new Annex H from EN, in EN ISO 16.140 Part 4, single lab validation, that laboratories uh, applying sample or test portion poolings that exceed the maximum sample size shall carry out, so it's mandatory to use this validation protocol in this new Annex. And the protocol from the current ISO 6887 part one will be deleted. The description with the nice pictures will uh, remain, but the protocol will be deleted. So it is uh, mandatory to use then this new protocol. And this is really a workload and a burden, a really high workload. Uh, because uh, the lab has to demonstrate that a larger test portion size has no effect on the level of detection LOD 50 compared to the LOD 50 of the validated test portion size as described in the reference method. Yeah, yeah, I see, you know what, yeah, it's really hard. So it means that qualitative reference methods and alternative methods which were validated using a larger test portion they can only uh, uh, need only to be verified according part three of ISO 16140. And for the verification, in this case, um, the foot category shall be used, which was always in the validation, of course, respecting always the dilution ratio between sample and diluent, which was also used in time and temperature. But 
And the good thing is once the larger test portion has been validated in the reference method or alternative method, all smaller test portions can be used also, you know, and so on, we have here a sample. But the problem is um, what to do if you have no validation data. And there it is uh, given only as a rough uh, uh, um, uh, figure here. It's too small to see. I know um, I go directly to the next uh, slide where you can see we have to do a lot of um, comparison between uh, the current validated sample size. For example, here for uh, um, Salmonella, it was 25 gram against 375 gram, which wanted to be used by the lab. Then you have to uh, uh, use one sample of each uh, size for negative. Then for the low level, you have to use 20 samples of each. And for the uh, higher level, five samples of each. And lower level is really uh, detection level or below. And um, uh, higher level is just above. So it's really very uh, low inoculation. And then um, examples are given also in this new annex uh, for validated, um, for these validations in the single lab for valid and non-valid studies. So one valid study for Salmonella and a non-valid study for Cronobacter. And uh, we have also a special Excel program uh, where you can uh, calculate the RLOD. Uh, which is in the ISO portal. So this will come uh, by mid of the year and we know it's a very high burden and but accreditation bodies will ask. So if you want to uh, validate uh, bigger uh, portions, size portions, start now. Before. Before, because when you are already started and running, no one will request the new. If you have the middle done, it's fine. But um, when you start after middle of the year or later, uh, we expect that it will be published in German version by autumn, by October maybe. And so then it is mandatory to be implemented. So when it is published in the um, national uh, frame, then it is mandatory to be used. So. Some outlooks, short outlooks to other methods. One is uh, a method of bifidobacteria. Yeah, uh, this is expected in second half of this year. It will contain the same medium, TOS medium, and the sample preparation has been aligned to ISO 6887 part 5 in this for the milk uh, and dairy products. And uh, the main uh, changes are also considered as major. And we have also full performance characteristics implemented in the standard. That's very good. And we currently prepare a publication in the IDF bulletin for the big sector on these validations. Will be published in parallel. Then we have a big revision of EN ISO 7218. Very big. It's a very, very important standard for all laboratories, food microbiology juice laboratories. It is expected to be published on ISO level mid-2024, soon, by the end of June. Main changes that the calculations have been simplified, equipment sections has been reorganized and updated. We will have more cross-references to other standards and not duplicating. And information on laboratory quality control and characterization of control microorganisms has been added. We will have a Merck webinar on uh, EN ISO 7218 by beginning of July on the details. Uh, then uh, I have seen uh, that uh, um, EN ISO 22174 general requirements and definitions for the PCR for the detection and quantification method has been also cited. I looked to, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I was very happy to see. <laughs> this is expect has been revised. It was also a long process. Uh, will be also published by mid of the year, maybe more as July or August. 
And the main changes are that we have now included the requirements of the implementation of digital PCR. Very good. Last minute we have implemented inclusion of the requirements for the laboratory flow uh, monitorings, uh, including the environmental monitoring for PCR extension of the control reactions and uh, description of the different controls, inclusion of a quantitative evaluation and inclusion um, of a clause on validation and verification. Of course, uh, then uh, with reference to ISO 16140 series. So, and uh, with this is a short update only for this year. Of course, in 2025, we will have more, <laughs> but we still have time for questions. <laughs>